A lot of you think you're tracked on your phone by the GPS. So the solution to stop location tracking seems simple. Turn off the GPS. This of course is incorrect. Big tech has been very busy trying to locate each and every one of us. There are so many ways to track your exact location using various sensors on your mobile phone and keeping your location private is getting close to impossible if you have a regular smartphone. I'm going to teach you how you're actually tracked without using the GPS. This has changed a lot in 2021. I'm going to talk about many techniques including Wi-Fi scanning, Wi-Fi triangulation, Apple AirTags, Amazon Sidewalk, Google Beacons, MAC address scanning, EXIF, EXIF, reverse IP lookups, Stingray, N5G, facial recognition, license plate readers, ultrasound, and gyro. There are many misconceptions. For example, a VPN does not directly stop location tracking. And depending on your mobile device, some of these cannot be disabled. Stopping location tracking is very important for privacy because it would be easy to dox you, profile you, and put you into Google tracking cohorts based on behavior discovered from your movements. Believe it or not, one can tell a lot about what you do just from your locations, including your politics, your financial status, your behaviors, your relationships, and your health. And many companies find this of extreme value, even if you think you have nothing to hide. Stay tuned. I'm on the platform odyssey.com and now I'm one of the top creators on there. Just for insurance, in case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. I have a VPN service, Bytes VPN. My company also sells degoogled phones. These products are made to make your identity disappear on the internet. And hopefully this video will explain why these products are important. If you're interested in them, they're on my app, Braxme. The link is in the description. Why is location tracking so dangerous? Location tracking is such a complex topic because it's almost like big tech has been finding every possible technology to track us all. And it's frankly impossible to evade if you have a mobile device. So today we will just get into an introductory view of each technology and maybe I can delve into deeper detail in later videos. Before I get into that, we ought to discuss why location tracking is important to so many companies. Many of you think you live boring lives and therefore you think your location is of little importance. But actually profiling a population by location is an extremely important piece of metadata, especially if combined with other behaviors already being recorded by big tech. For example, Google partner Moonshot CVE actually identified in this chart where all the people are who are anti-vax. Easy classifications include which neighborhoods watch CNN versus Fox News. And of course, you can be classified further by the median income in each neighborhood. The company Palantir likely has access to IRS data so they can actually map locations and your movements while tying it to your exact income. For example, they would know which church you go to and who your doctor is. These classifications are dangerous because they allow message targeting to manipulate your point of view. And it can be done at a very personal level once you've been classified. Coming from a country run by a dictator, this kind of stuff gives me a lot of fear. And the more you are pre-classified, the more you'll be forced to conform or you will stick out and be targeted. There are many techniques used for location tracking and now we'll group them by the source of the threat. The main threats to location tracking are number one Google and Apple, number two Amazon, number three Facebook, number four government and phone carriers, number five offensive data contractors like Palantir and Jigsaw, number six data resellers, Number seven, I create another group for theoretical threats that I have not yet seen in the wild, but the tech is there. I'll talk about each threat and what techniques they would use to track you. Number one, Google and Apple. If you have a Google Android or an iOS phone, then you are clearly being tracked in many ways. Even though Google and Apple will say that you can disable the location tracking. I, for one, will not believe it. The main way a phone is tracked is through Wi-Fi triangulation. 
This is permission-based, meaning you have to grant permission for an app to use this. And the permission is controlled through the operating system or OS, which is Android and iOS. Roughly, Wi-Fi triangulation works by your devices looking for the Wi-Fi routers near you and finding their identifiers called a MAC address. Then together with the signal strength to each Wi-Fi router, that data is sent to the geolocation servers of Apple and Google, and then they are able to derive your location within six feet. This works very accurately because Google and Apple have a large database of every Wi-Fi router in existence and where they are located. Exactly. So the real threat is not in Wi-Fi triangulation since you can just turn off permissions for each app. The real threat is called Wi-Fi scanning and it is how your phone scans for Wi-Fi routers anywhere you are and then the GPS coordinates are sent together with the Wi-Fi MAC addresses to Google and Apple together with your Apple ID and Google ID. This particular operation is permissionless and occurs constantly, often many times a minute. This particular piece of data is available only to Apple and Google. The only way to ensure it doesn't occur is to not have a Google Android or Apple iOS phone. For example, a the Google phone or Linux phone will not do this. Because of this special capability of Apple and Google, these two could geofence anyone since they can identify who was where and when. For example, it would be a simple matter for them to identify phones found wherever a demonstration occurred. This geofencing is already done and used by government. They will subpoena the information from Apple and Google. In addition to Wi-Fi scanning, Apple now tracks AirTags. Every single iPhone participates in this network where Apple AirTags are tracked. This, as I discussed in another video, is a form of contact tracing. The location of the AirTag is noted and then all the phones in the same area will send that location to Apple. Thus, all iPhones in the same area will tag the same AirTag and be known to be in one location. This is related to another similar feature which is contact tracing. If you install a contact tracing app, then any one of you in the area will then be recorded as being together just by physical proximity. Google also plays fixed location beacons called Google Beacons. If you're running an app that can sense these beacons, then your location will be determined once you get close to one. Google beacons are fixed points on Google Maps and are typically locations of businesses. Number two, Amazon. Amazon just got into the location tracking game recently. Their main way of tracking is through this mesh network they created called Amazon Sidewalk. Basically, each Amazon Echo since 2018 has been equipped with a radio receiver and transmitter in the 900 megahertz range and any Bluetooth emission or other RF signal in this frequency range can be captured by some Amazon Echo within half a mile and then transmit that data to Amazon. Trust me when I say that there are plenty of Amazon Echoes, probably enough to completely cover every metropolitan area from end to end. While this alone may not give a precise enough location, it can now be combined with two other data points captured. One is the exact location of a tile tracker nearby. Tile is similar to an Apple AirTag, same thing. So your position related to a tile tracker can be determined. The second is through the use of Ring cameras. Ring is owned by Amazon. The videos are sent to a central server and shared with law enforcement. Amazon will do facial recognition with Ring and thus be able to pinpoint faces found on the videos and doubly track by being detected by the Amazon Sidewalk Network. Number three, Facebook. Facebook has been in the business of tracking locations since day one. And their main source of data has been through your photos. Most of you don't realize that, that location coordinates are kept in every photo you take from your phone. This is why you want to turn off location permissions for the camera app at all times. Each time you upload a photo to Facebook, it captures the metadata with the location on the photos. The metadata is called EXIF, E-X-I-F. It is how Facebook is able to sort all your photos by exact location, again, within six feet. They're using the Wi-Fi triangulation features provided by the OS. Facebook then combines location with facial recognition to tag other people in the photos. So once they do that, locations are then available for everyone in the photos, even if the other people did not upload any photos to Facebook or ran the app recently. 
Facebook also actively collects your location, again using Wi-Fi triangulation, and determines who is next to each other. This was used to recommend friends, and is very creepy since you may not know or like people nearby, like at a bar, and they find out your name and Facebook profile. Facebook is so creepy that they actually started collecting the serial numbers of every device in a local network and then can spot that serial number which is called a MAC address in other locations where there are other Facebook users. So once the MAC addresses of the devices near you are collected, each device can be tracked separately and can be spotted as they are discovered in other networks like at Walmart, Trader Joe's or the local courthouse anywhere there are many Facebook app users. And every person on every photo in any location who may not even be connected to the uploader will be noted as being in a particular location. For example, a photo at Disneyland may have people in the background and they will be discovered by the facial recognition engine and be recorded as also being at Disneyland. Number four, government and phone carriers. I link the government with phone carriers because when the government wants to track someone, they will typically piggyback over the network of the phone carrier. Since each carrier is heavily regulated by each government, then every country is able to track every cell phone without dealing with Apple or Google. For example, in the USA, there's a law called CALEA, which is the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act. This allows government to wiretap any phone and each carrier was legally required to provide technology to enable this on demand. So wiretapping and tracking is built into the network. The way a phone is identified on a carrier's network is by two identifiers. One is called the IMEI, which is the International Mobile Equipment Identity. It's basically a unique serial number of each device. Secondly, there is the IMSI, or International Mobile Subscriber Identity, which is the unique identifier in your SIM card. This is given to you by your carrier, so every SIM card has an IMSI. The way tracking has been done by governments in the past has been through the use of IMSI catchers. Each phone emits an announcement of its IMSI every time it wants to connect to a carrier network. There are spy devices used by government and were originally called Stingray. These devices can capture the IMSIs in a specific area. Stingray itself can't necessarily determine a location, so this kind of location tracking is done by geofencing. Stingray devices are placed in specific areas, then all IMSIs in that zone will be recorded. For example, let's say there's a protest in Hong Kong. It would be a simple matter for the government to put an IMSI catcher in the area. In fact, it can be worn underneath clothing, so a plainclothes police officer would just walk around and capture the IMSIs. Whenever the IMSIs are captured, the IMEIs are also captured. If you're looking for a specific person within a large area, one way of finding a specific phone is by flying an IMSI catcher overhead, like using a drone or aircraft. In fact, this technique was used to find a terrorist. Once the general area is determined overhead, then officers can close in with more stingrays to triangulate someone closer. And as I already mentioned earlier, simply by knowing the IMSI, law enforcement is able to wipe that a phone. In 2021, a new development added a more precise location to this capability. Location can now be determined exactly within inches using 5G. What happened is that 5G uses beamforming technology to actually point the signal of the carrier direct to your phone. The carrier knows exactly where every phone is if using 5G. And by extension, the government will also know where every phone is if they have a particular target. Now fortunately, this tracking can only occur if you have a SIM card. Removing the SIM card or putting a phone inside a Faraday bag should eliminate any kind of tracking. Remember, the MZ is in the SIM card, so if you remove the SIM card, then there is no identifier on the phone. And that is true even if the phone can connect to an emergency number without a SIM card. The government has other methods of tracking people beyond the phone. Here in California, there is an extensive network of cameras in many street corners and license plate readers. There is also an RFID-based network on freeways, which is used to collect tolls. Based on all of this, a city like Los Angeles is able to track movements of people on their vehicles directly. The cameras do facial recognition. Traffic tickets are processed automatically by facial recognition based on driver's license photos. And if you happen to wear a mask, the license plate will be captured in the photo front and back. 
I'm going to talk more about the street cameras in the next thread. Number five, offensive data contractors. One example of a contractor that I call an offensive data contractor is the company Palantir. When I say offensive, I mean that data is not merely captured passively. The data is used to attack the target in some way. Another company that is in the offensive business is Jigsaw, which is owned by Alphabet. These companies profile specific individuals and then that information is used for targeting. In the case of Palantir, the Los Angeles camera system on freeways combined with the license plate readers is used to track the movements of individuals in the city. One particular use that has been contracted to Palantir is that the LAPD identifies individuals associating with gang members and then the LAPD puts those people on a list and then harasses them as they are encountered in the area. They are stopped frequently and interrogated even when the individuals, often young teens, have not committed any crimes. In other words, this is a pre-crime system. So the data that is available through the government's infrastructure is made available to third parties like Palantir and they're able to combine data from the IRS, medical records, credit reports, and other government authorized data sources with internet social media data and now camera data from the streets and license plate reader data. In addition, through government contracts, they are now able to also access data collected by ring cameras, which many of you have dutifully installed in your house to provide a nice free surveillance system that they can use, but on your dime. So the surveillance world has become multi-layered and these data contractors are the ones enabled to access the different layers. Number six, data resellers. There is another group of companies that make money from selling their collected data. This data will likely end up in the hands of Palantir and Jigsaw, but the data resellers are interested only in making money. First, this starts out with all the free apps on your phone. Those app developers are not making money offering you their free games or utilities. As you know, you will typically see ads on those types of apps. But the data collection occurs like this. The apps provide an area where an advertiser can insert their content. The app developer simply gets an advertising fee based on who sees the ads. However, what is actually happening is that in addition to feeding the ad, the ad company takes your identity data on the phone, the location, and the IP address, and then sells that. So imagine a database with a name, an exact location, and an IP address. Imagine that this data is collected many, many times a day. This is then put into a reverse IP lookup database. These reverse IP lookup databases are sold by subscription. There are many suppliers like Skyhook, Wireless, and many others. If you subscribe, you can then cross-check an IP address and see what the location is and possibly a name or email address. Thus, it will be possible now to dox any person simply by knowing their IP address. Normally, an IP address only gives an approximate location, but with a reverse IP lookup database, the location will be exact if you are on your home network. It will not be exact if you're on mobile data. So for this reason, this threat is more dangerous when you're on your home Wi-Fi. Your exact address will be found, typically within a range of four to five houses. This is the primary reason you need a VPN in your house because a VPN will prevent this match to a home network. So for those not using a VPN, including your guests, an IP address and your home IP address will get recorded and can put you in a reverse IP lookup database. Once that happens, your location is compromised with the IP address permanently. The data resellers can sell this information to anyone. In fact, any one of you could rent this database for a few thousand a year. Definitely affordable to a corporate user. Number seven, other theoretical threats. Some other threats are not proven to be occurring at the moment, though they are technically very feasible. But I have not found actual proof of their use in the wild. But some of you may know and you can let me know. One way of tracking is using MAC addresses. Your phones announce a MAC address identity everywhere. And this is in the Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth. Ever since contact tracing was added, Bluetooth also announced a MAC address. In fact, I could write software that can identify a MAC address approaching me before I physically see the phone. 
This can be used to record known individuals and then match it to a MAC address. So I would know if a particular person is approaching. MAC addresses can be used as proximity trackers. Another use is in building security. In a government building, the security could be checking IDs as you enter and then the associated MAC address of your device can also be recorded at the same time. Then by placing RF sensors at strategic locations in the buildings, like at elevators, you could then track people as they move around. I know this is easy to do, so I'm going to presume this is used somewhere. Another theoretical threat is ultrasound. Instead of a Google beacon, there could be sound transmitters at key locations, which emit a particular ultrasound pattern. People cannot hear the ultrasound, but computers can hear them. So as people talk on the phone, call Siri, Cortana, Google Assistant, Alexa, the background ultrasound could also be recorded. That could then pinpoint the location if the ultrasound message is captured. Since all it takes is a microphone, then all devices can be vulnerable to this. At the same token, since the ultrasound can be emitted by any speaker, including a phone, the signal could be generated from any phone and not be discovered by anyone but a dog. Just imagine the contact tracing possibility here when each phone is actually sending out ultrasound messages privately to other phones. Another way to track without a GPS is by using the phone gyro sensor. This can track movements from a known fixed location. So theoretically your location can be tracked just from compass headings, speed over a period of time. There are some restrictions to this, so it is not fully effective, but hacking a phone to allow this is possible, particularly with biometric devices like Fitbit and Apple Watch. I'm gonna stop here. There are many ways of discovering our locations, but I'm sticking to the ones that are able to capture very precise positions and be stored in a database. It will take another video to talk about how to defend against these. So please subscribe so you can watch a follow-up. Thanks for watching. See you next time.